All right, so if you guys have one of these boards uh, that has the built-in Express LRS receivers that are using SPI, you're going to have to update your Betaflight firmware to get the latest version two Express LRS firmware. And I have uh, been holding off on this video. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to make this. And the reason I've been holding off on it is because the procedures can kind of change and then you have to deal with nightly builds and it's a little bit messy. And I didn't want to have to remake this video uh, every week. So now that RC1 has been released, so Betaflight 4.3 RC1 is now out, you can do this um, fairly easily. And I'm going to walk you through this in this video. Now, the procedure will probably not change. I'm pretty, that's why I'm fairly confident and um, it's not going to change. That's why I'm making this video now, even after um, it goes to final release, because uh, the 10.8.0 configurator is also now in RC1. So I will go to the computer and I'll show you all that and what you need to do. Uh, basically, you need the configurator and then you can get the firmware from within the configurator. No need to go hunt for weird, mysterious hex files and see if it's going to work or not. And for those of you that are wondering what this video is all about, these flight controllers have uh, SPI receivers and they don't have the built-in Wi-Fi chip and all that stuff, all the fancy extra stuff that Express LRS usually comes with with a standalone receiver. And so it uses the MCU or the basically the, the computer CPU around the flight controller to handle the uh, processing stuff of the receiver as well as the flight controller itself. So the advantage is it's, I guess it's got less latency, um, but it does have overhead in terms of what you can do with the flight controller. So things like PID, PID loops and stuff like that are going to be limited to like 2K, I believe, on the F411. There's going to be a link I'll show you here on the website where you can check out more information about the SPI receivers and how they work. But that's basically the background because um, you can't use the Express LRS configurator to update the Express LRS firmware on these flight controllers with SPI receivers. You have to update Betaflight because the firmware is now baked into Betaflight. So with the latest RC1, it's going to be version 2.0, the final 2.0. I don't believe it's 2.0.1. I believe if you want that, you're going to have to use one of the nightly builds, but I'm not going to be covering that in this video. And later on when the final... 4.3 is out, um, they'll probably have the latest um, uh, Express LRS baked into the firmware as you go on. So this might already be a little bit outdated if you're watching this in the far future, but the procedure should be the same. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you how to update these flight controllers. All right, so in case uh, you guys don't know a lot about Express LRS but need more information, I am going to refer you to this website. This is the uh, formal or the official Express LRS website and all the 2.0 stuff is, is talked about here. If you want to see the 1.0 stuff, just hit the drop down menu and hit 1.0. But uh, most people are going to be interested in the 2.0 features. And you can go in here and take a look at this website. It has all the quick start stuff, how to flash all your receivers, etc. And they do have a section on the SPI receivers. I'm going to cover that uh, a little more detail in a moment. First thing you need to do is Go to this link here. I'll have this down in the video description. It is to the Betaflight configurator releases. And the release candidate one is out now. Uh, as of five days ago is the time of the recording of this video. And go down here, scroll down, and you'll see different versions. I'm going to get the one for my Windows system here. So you go ahead and download that, save it to your computer, and then run through the installation process. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Um, it's pretty much the same as all the older versions of Betaflight Configurator. So once you've got that installed and you have it running, it should look like this. It's exactly the same as the old Betaflight Configurator. It just says here 10.8.0 debug, where this just means it's a release candidate version. If you're watching this in the future, um, I'm assuming that 10.8.0 final release is out now and it'll just say 10.8.0 here. All right, so at this point, uh, you want to save whatever settings are on your current flight controller, just in case you want to re uh, I guess, put those settings back in, which we'll do at the end of the video. So go ahead and plug in your flight controller and you probably want to take your props off, whatever here, just for safety reasons. Just go into your CLI 
and clear output history. And it's going to do a diff all. And we'll go ahead and save that file somewhere on your computer, somewhere we can find it again. Go ahead and exit. So this version of Betaflight Configurator does auto connect, so we're going to have to disconnect again. And I'm going to actually disconnect the physical USB cable from the flight controller now. So for this example, I'm going to be using the Happy Model, um, the Crazy BF4 with the Express LRS, of course, on there. Uh, I will also show you which one to use for the Betaflight, or sorry, the Beta FPV boards. And if there are other future flight controllers from other brands, uh, you'll have to figure out which uh, target that is for your particular brand. I, these are the only ones I have available to me right now. At the time of this video, there may be additional ones in the future. So the first thing you want to do here, uh, plugging this flight controller back in before you flash it is put it into DFU mode. This is optional. You know, it may or may not work if it's not in DFU mode. I just do it. I just do this because it's guaranteed to flash no matter what. So I'm going to put it into DFU mode. And to do that, you press and hold the bootloader button on the flight controller when you plug it into the USB, and that will put it into DFU mode. So your flight controller might uh, have a bootloader button in a weird spot. Uh, you'll have to figure that out on your particular model. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video. Okay, so if uh, you're successful in getting your flight controller into DFU mode, in the drop-down menu here, it will say DFU STM32 bootloader. If it's not working for you, you probably have a driver problem. As you can see here, um, there's an STM32 uh, VSP drivers here and the CP210 drivers. You may want to try one of these to update them uh, on your computer. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I have another video on how to fix your USB driver problems. I'll link that in the video description. Also, um, there's a Zadig program that's also mentioned in the other video. But yeah, there's information here on fixing your driver problems if that's not going to DFU mode and you can't flash. So without this in DFU mode and without proper USB drivers, you may not be able to flash. But anyway, assuming you've gotten your board into DFU mode, it'll look like this. Then we'll go to update firmware. And then in this case, I'm going to have these things selected. Show un unstable releases and enable expert mode. So you're probably going to be, if you if you have this install for the first time, it's going to probably look like this with nothing selected, uh, basically with everything grayed out. So you want to select unstable releases and enable expert mode. This is to get the RC1 candidate. Then in the first drop down menu, you want, you want to select release and release candidate. So this is obviously for now because we're only on RC1. Later on, when uh, the final release is out, you won't have to do this. You, in fact, you it'll be a it won't be an unstable release. It'll just be a regular release, and so you can just select the whatever your target is here normally as before. But it, because we're doing an RC1, we have to select these for this particular video. So then select release all or release and release candidate, and then the board that we're uh, that we're using the crazy VF4 board has a specific target with the Express LRS firmware in it. And it is going to be the crazy B F4 SX 1280. This is the target you want. And it looks like, yeah, there's only one version here from December 23rd. If you are flashing a beta FPV board, you're going to select the target that was in here previously. That was over here. It's called a beta FPV. F4 SX 1280. So if you have one of the, if you have a beta FPV board, you're going to select this one instead. But because we're uh, we're flashing the Happy Model board, we're going to be selecting the Crazy B F4 SX 1280. And again, your particular board might have a different target, so keep that in mind. And then uh, we're going to do a full chip erase here since we got all the settings in the CLI dump or the default. So I'm going to just wipe out everything, make sure that there's no weird stuff in there. I'm going to hit load firmware online. So no more hunting for weird hex files. It'll find it for you. And it's already downloaded it. And we'll go ahead and hit flash. And we'll just wait for it to erase and verify.
Okay, so this point I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the board. And then we'll go ahead and plug it back in. Okay, so ignore this warning here because we're going to put all these settings back in from the default that we put in, uh, that we dumped out from before. So we can close this, go into your CLI. We'll go ahead and find that file. And I'm just going to select all the settings. So we're going to copy that, go back over here, down into this command line, and hit paste, hit enter. So we got some, basically some red lines mean there's some errors here. Basically, it means that some of these things on the older versions, these, these nightly builds that were on here before, have uh, probably changed. So, like, for example, this uh, low-pass whatever is not in here anymore in this particular version. And also invalid this is hybrid switches. You can now, I think, set this in uh, CLI command. Or actually, I think it's set in the, you can do this with it from the uh, Lewis script on the transmitter now instead of a CLI command. So it's, now that's invalid in the CLI. So stuff like that, you're going to see, these are not a big deal. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about these. I'm just checking these really quick. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah it doesn't look like there's anything here that to, to be concerned about. So at this point, you just hit save, enter, and then that will actually save and reboot the board. And now it says we have a problem with the accelerometer. So we'll go ahead and um, calibrate the accelerometer. Okay. So that should have the uh, that error go away. And then um, you should now have all of the PIDs and other settings that you carried over from before. So one of the things I want to test here is to make sure that the receiver is working with my um, Express LRS module that has the version 2 uh, firmware on it. So I'm going to put in my um, binding phrase, which is one of the nice features that you can do this in the CLI. So we'll go to the CLI here. And then in order to get your binding phrase, just basically you used to be able to, you, you, you should just be able to get this from the, when you flashed the module, it would show up in the console when uh, all the bunch of stuff would fl fly on the screen. You, you would have to kind of look for it and it would, it would actually be there. But now you can actually go to the um, Express Alerts website, go to this page here where it says um, SPI receivers. And then there's a, a UID byte generator, which basically takes your binding phrase and it converts it into this UID bytes, which is this little set of numbers here. So it's, like a, it's basically a hash of the of your binding phrase. So I already put mine in here, just being put in whatever yours is. And then as you can see, it's already put the commands in here for you. So we just copy this. So obviously yours is gonna be different because your binding phrase will be different from mine. And then this will adjust. So just for example, You'll see if I change this to something else, you know, the binding phrase or the uh, UA device has adjusted for the additional characters. So go ahead and back to the uh, CLI here and we'll just paste that in and hit save. And I'll go ahead and turn my transmitter on. Welcome to our PTX. Yeah, I'll go to the receiver tab. Okay, so uh, one of the things that you're going to want to check uh, before you actually um, bind up your receiver and everything, uh, before you actually do anything, is reduce your PID loop frequency. So this carried over from the previous configuration, uh, whatever, the, this is what was in there before. So you have to drop that from 8 down to 2. I think that's what was recommended. And it's because if you can see here at 8, the CPU load is like 64%, pretty high. Uh, basically, it's not usable at that kind of CPU load. It's because the CPU is running both the, all the flight controller stuff, video transmitter, and all that, and also the Express LRS firmware. So it needs a lower PID loop on the flight controller side so you can manage the stuff for the Express LRS. So we're going to go ahead and switch that down to 2 kilohertz and save and reboot. Okay, so it looks like I have a connection on my transmitter now. If we go into receiver, you can see now everything is working. And now you can also see here that the CPU load is down to 20%, which is uh, 
better or not great, but uh, more reasonable for this one. And this is because uh, I think a lot of these F um, or these all-in-one flight controllers, they have the F411 chip and not the F405 or the F7, uh, you know, any of the faster, bigger chips. So if you have, uh, a, you know, if you're watching this in the future and you have one of the newer flight controllers with like an F4 all-in-one and an SPI receiver, this may not apply to you. It's just because the F411 is a slower chip. You have to reduce your PID loop for this particular problem on those particular boards. So that's pretty much it. Everything else, you know, should be pretty standard in terms of beta flight stuff. Uh, this will get you going on the new firmware with the updated Express LRS firmware as well. And I imagine as uh, more updates occur to the different firmware targets, we'll incorporate the updates that to Express LRS into there. Um, you're probably going to have to watch the release notes to see which particular versions are in there because it's not really well documented right now because it's kind of early days on this, but I'm pretty sure they'll probably do that in the future. So if you see a new target with a new version and you want to know if it's got any of the bug fixes for you know, Express LRS version 2.5 or 2.7 or 3.0 sometime in the future, check the release notes and also check the Express LRS website. They'll probably have information there as well. All right, so hopefully this was a helpful video and got you going on this. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave me a like if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I'll talk to you guys next time.